My apologies for my absence. Part 6. Enjoy random jump scares of Bing Bing. I am missing the baby. I got snacks, I got drink, and I have a bird decker. You ain't ever done one before? The surprise in Brad's voice bordered on disgust. Is that weird? Ronnie asked, feeling some shame creep up. It's sad, not weird. Sad is what it is. Come on, is that rewarding? What kind of question is that? It's rewarding, dipshit. It's nearly a permanent reward if you do it just right. It's that perfect hint of nasty that you can never quite put your finger on. You don't want it too weak, but you also don't want it too strong, you know? But, but it ain't easy. You gotta put in the right amount of effort for the perfect execution. But what does that entail exactly? Mm, usually eating mostly like pickled eggs and broccoli. And if you sprinkle some gorgonzola on top of it for like good measure. Of course this is a poop story. Of course this is a poop story. Essentially you're just inflating your gut with the most potent turd possible. This is my personal recipe, right? It has taken me years to craft. If you're just sitting around on your fat ass eating McDonald's all week, you ain't even gonna get that good good, you see? Did you know you can leave a McDonald's cheeseburger out for like a fucking month and it won't even rot? I've done that. Did you know that? Oh, no. See, dude, it's like a lot more complex than you think. Well, that explains your diet instructions. <sighs> Everything is making sense now. So if you didn't catch it already, our first two characters is Brad and Ronnie. No idea what age they are, but I'm assuming they're young enough to be talking about poop stuff. Also, Bing Bing is being taken care of by the love of my life, the embodiment of a middle-aged dad. Courtesy to the pictures. Also, boop. <laughs> Ronnie continued. Oh, of course all this makes sense now. And Brad shoots back. Of course it makes sense, Ronnie. This ain't some fucking game to me, dude. I have been perfecting my skills for some time now. I know all the ins and outs. As a first timer, you should be sucking my doink with the type of skill advantage that you were being presented with right now. That's disgusting, dude. I mean, come on, dude. For the homies, not like that. I'm just, it's, listen, I don't mean it literally. Listen, the bottom line is that it takes a special kind of stench just to be strong enough to ba break through the porcelain tank. Not everyone is capable. Do you understand? What? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Well, sometimes I wonder with the way you act sometimes. Okay, dude, I'm, I'm listening. I am all in. I'm in it for about 102%. 102%. See what you did there. That's good because today we can see if your deuce can produce. Unquote from the book. Now we get to see if your deuce can produce. I'm eating. I'm scared. Ain't nothing to be afraid of, sweet tits. Have I ever let you down? Too many times to count. Let me rephrase. Have I ever let you down when it comes to fucking with someone? Never, never, never. That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, come on. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna play it cool. We're just there to hang out. So just that casual. And if anything crazy happens, just let me do all the talking. <laughs> right on. <laughs> all right, so you ready then? Yeah, uh, I've been holding it for a few hours now. If we don't get in there soon, uh, we might have some trouble. I don't want it to get stuck. Uh, my be will... Building up a wall inside. I can't take this seriously. Do a part six. Do a part six. It's just poopy stories. Ah, understood. All right, let's get moving. Brad and Ronnie made their way up to the doorstep. Brad stuck his finger out and poked the ringer, letting the annoying buzz tread water just a little longer than necessary. When the door opened, they both projected false expressions of enthusiasm and innocence. The authenticity would have been difficult to decipher, although Ronnie looked a little tight on the account of him trying to keep all his human volcano from exploding. Cheers, mate. Hey, uh, Mr. Smalls. Is Matthew here? What exactly do you want, Bradley? 
See, you see, we just rented this copy of Clay Fighter 2, Judgment Clay, and I wanted to see if he wanted to play with us. Video games rot the brain, Bradley. I should have expected that much from you. But on second thought, Matthew could use some camaraderie. You can see if he's up for it, but the next time you come, please call first. <laughs> yes, sir. You got my word on that. Hmm. Yep. I'm assuming Mr. Smalls is Matthew's father. Um, it's a bit tight-ended, but he's like, uh, my son Matthew's kind of fucking weird and he could use some friends. Uh, nobody really comes around and asks to hang out with my weird son. Eh, let it happen. So the two scampered up the stairs to go play with weird kid Matthew while the plans are a-brewin'. No freaking way! Clay Fighter 2? Matthew, this little kid, was super excited to see this video game that he wasn't allowed to play. His father, Mr. Smalls, like disappeared and went back to the den to be a dad watching sports or something. Brad and Ronnie entered Matthew's bedroom. Matthew wasn't surprised to see the two. Neither of them had a Super Nintendo Entertainment System, but they knew Matthew did. It wasn't out of the norm for them to rent a game and then use Matthew as his, and his hardware as a vehicle to play it. Matthew knew that they weren't interested in his company, but he was okay with that. To him, it was an even trade-off. They all coexisted and got to play stuff they normally wouldn't. So, Brad and Ronnie didn't particularly like this video game series, but they knew Matthew liked it. So they used it as a vehicle to get into his house and keep Matthew distracted long enough for Ronnie to pop his cherry and drop his first upper decker. What the actual fuck is this book? And here we go with pictures. All right, so I read this page and I'm gonna save you some fucking brain cells. So the three of them are like deciding, oh yeah, I'll take first controller, I'll take second controller. Ronnie's like, oh yeah, I got winner. You mind if I take a pee first? I really gotta go. Matt's like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And, uh, <laughs> uh, it described, you know, Ronnie sneaking downstairs, really listening for the TV, and, you know, trying to find out where everyone is, and he sneaks into the bathroom, closes the door, doesn't have the fan on, so he can, like, really, you know, listen to see if anyone's coming. And then... He takes, instead of the toilet bowl, he goes into the water tank. He takes a lid off the water tank and in very, you know, pretty intense descriptions of his muscles contracting and really like straining against the will of God to not spew his innards all over the place. He had to like focus he focused to, like, shit inside the water tank. That is an upper decker, I guess. <laughs> Pooping in the water tank. <laughs> this is literature. This is <laughs> literature. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna try to, like, inhabit Michael Caine's, like, rendition of the Muppets Christmas Carol. Like, he took that role so seriously. So, this is me trying to inhabit that will of God to you. <clears throat> he was in the perfect position to unload. He said a brief prayer to God that that he let his first upper decker drop into the tank seamlessly. And as his beating fleshy gateway opened, the Lord granted his simple wish. I'm going to bounce back a little bit on this very paragraph. Top of the page. Gently, he balanced himself. Ronnie's ass hovered over the exposed water tank as his wrinkled anus began to smooth out and throb rapidly. <sighs> There's pictures, by the way. Skipping the detail of this very act, Brad was right. He was truly adept to the field of sport shitting. He had effectively coached him through the birth of his first brown child. <laughs> Brother Joey Swole can't save you from that shit. 